after the disappointing recent announcement that Red Dead Redemption 1 will be released on Nintendo Switch and modern PlayStation systems instead of a long-awaited remaster that has been speculated for years now, I thought it would be a good idea to revisit this game in 2023 to see how it holds up and whether it's truly worth playing or not. I think the outcome of this video might surprise you. Did you play this game back in the day? Give the video a quick like rating if you did, and let's see how many of you are watching. The graphics. This game was released in 2010, so it wouldn't be unreasonable to assume the graphics are now outdated. Surprisingly, this isn't the case. I played this game on Xbox Series X, which plays at 60 FPS, and the map looks pretty incredible for a game of this age. Yes, details on certain character models don't look the best, and textures aren't as detailed compared to games releasing nowadays, but for the most part, the graphics really don't hold this game back. Even if you do really care about the visuals, this game will not put you off despite its age, which is pretty remarkable. The open world. This was surprising. I forgot how alive this world feels. Yes, it's not on the same level as Red Dead Redemption 2, but as you explore the world, the NPCs truly feel like they are real people, instead of just standing around like dumb pricks. They react with each other and actually have a purpose. This shines when you visit the little towns around the map, which feel lived in as you watch the NPCs look after their animals and ranches. I love the fact you can even do night watches to help the NPCs protect their towns. It's just a cool little feature. This is something you cannot even do in Red Dead Redemption 2. The map was also huge for its time and it still feels big now, but it never feels like any details were missed. And luckily, you can fast travel, which is ideal if you aren't a fan of long horse rides. The random NPC events that you often see in the GTA series are also a thing in this game. You'll often be asked to catch someone who has just robbed some bloke's horse or free someone who's just been tied up by criminals. And it's your choice whether you blow their tits off or tie them up. All this just adds to the immersion and I really enjoy these little events. No, you might want to deal with this fella yourself. To help the world feel even more expansive, there are many different things you can do around the map such as drinking at bars, playing poker, duels, visiting movie theatres, and so much more. It might not be on the same level as Red Dead Redemption 2's world building, but it's still impressive despite its age. And it does a better job than more recent games, such as Cyberpunk 2077, at making the world feel alive. Gameplay. So here I was expecting it to feel a bit dated in places. But surprisingly, most of the gameplay holds up. The biggest issue I had was the horse riding. When you've played Red Dead Redemption 2 for years, the horse riding in this game does feel quite rough. And I feel like the horse has a mind of its own at times. Trying to steer into the direction you want to go in can be difficult. The animations whilst riding are also incredibly fast paced for some reason, which makes it look unrealistic when compared to Red Dead Redemption 2. Apart from that, Gunplay feels surprisingly good and it still works very well. At no point does it feel outdated. Killing enemies is still incredibly satisfying and I love the classic Deadeye when you can select multiple targets and literally twat the piss out of enemies. It makes you feel like a beast. The reputation system is in this game, so killing innocent people does have some effect, and NPCs will react to you negatively if you let the bar decrease, which helps with the world building aspect. Customization is lacking a bit when compared to Red Dead Redemption 2. Things such as being able to customize your full outfit by buying lots of clothes, fully customizable guns, and being able to grow a beard aren't in this game. 
but it's not a big deal. You can unlock outfits at least, and there is guns, properties, and lots of different things to buy still. Gameplay as a whole is very impressive for its age, and I'd be bold enough to say it's still much better than most games release nowadays, as there is just so much to do. The story. This is the main reason why people decide to pick up this game again and I couldn't agree more. Yes, some of the missions like herding damn cows is kind of annoying, but during these missions, you build a relationship with the characters and find out more about them. The story is truly timeless, and I had a blast playing through it again. If you've played Red Dead Redemption 2, which is set before this game, seeing the characters appear again in this one is amazing as you already know these characters really well and it's great to see where they've ended up later in life and what kind of person they've become. Uh. Oh. <laughs> Poor guy. It's a shame there was no mention of Arthur when Red Dead Redemption 1 was made but I guess Rockstar did not know who their main protagonist was going to be yet for Red Dead Redemption 2. I think replaying this game after Red Dead Redemption 2 is a must as you truly get so much out of it and to see John get betrayed at the end of this game really adds even greater impact when you realise everything Arthur did in Red Dead Redemption 2 to give John a better life for it all to get pissed away and that mission at the end where you get to play as John's son is so damn good. It's potentially one of the best story modes ever made in a video game, but of course this is subjective. Overall, should you play Red Dead Redemption 1 in 2023? Honestly, for the story alone, this is a yes, but considering most other aspects of this game still hold up and don't ever feel outdated, I highly recommend playing this game. Anything that does feel a bit rough around the edges, you get used to anyway, as it just grips you so quickly, and it's hard to stop playing. The bonus of being able to play Undead Nightmare is just amazing, and it is a shame that it's now unlikely this will ever get a remaster due to Rockstar's latest announcement, but I'm sure this could change if enough people want one. Then again, it's about time we just got GTA 6 I guess, but do let me know in the comments below your thoughts on this game and how good do you think it is? I would love to know. And to find out whether GTA 4 Online is still active in 2023, and to be honest, this could surprise you. I, this is just unreal. This is unbelievable. Just click the card on screen to watch that video. Thank you guys for watching as always, and have a great rest of your day.